In today's video, we're going to explore beautiful water lily fields in Vietnam, as well as take a trip to Thailand to find a lily pad so big that a human being can stand on it, all so that we can learn about aquatic plant adaptations. Just like us, plants need water to survive, but too much water can result in a plant dying. There are, however, some plants that have adapted to living in these conditions. Aquatic plants, or hydrophytes, are adapted to a life in water. Some float on the water, some emerge out of the water, while others live underwater. on our way here to get close and personal with the biggest water lily in the world, the Victoria Amazonica. The Victoria Amazonica is an extreme example of an aquatic plant. Its giant leaves float on the surface of the water and are so big they can support the weight of a human being. These giant water lilies behind me are the biggest water lilies in the world. They are native to the Amazon water basin. Stomata which are tiny microscopic holes on the leaves of plants that allow carbon dioxide in and oxygen out. So basically they kind of allow plants to breathe in their own way. They also allow water to leave the plant just like us when we sweat. It's more common for leaves to have the stomata on the bottom side of their leaves, but the Victoria Amazonica and other floating plants have their stomata on top. This is because if their stomata was on the bottom, it would be in the water, which means gas exchange couldn't happen and in its own way, the plant couldn't breathe. How are you? I am under the water. Please help me. You are too much raining. The Victoria Amazonica is so buoyant, meaning it floats very well because of the ribs underneath it. They trap many, many pockets of air, which is why it is so buoyant and can support the weight of a child. Underneath the lily pad are also lots and lots of spikes. They are there to stop peckish fish and nibbling aquatic creatures from eating the leaves. If you look closely to the rims around the lily pads, you'll also see tiny little gaps. Those are to let the water out of the lily pad to stop it from filling up with water and eventually sinking. That's all you really need to know about the Victoria Amazonica. Here we are at a giant lotus field thing. Around us here are hundreds of lily pads. So lily pads are actually floating plants, but they can also be emergent. So you'll see that some of the leaves are floating on the water, while others have a stem that's coming out of the water. So now I'm just going to show you the underside of this lily pad. So if we look at the underside, you can see these little notches, and that's what keeps it off of the water. That's what keeps it floating, because the little tiny pockets of air will stay underneath that. And if you look inside of the stem, you can also see teeny tiny little holes, just like straws. Those are filled with air, and that's what's going to keep it buoyant. That's, what comes, that's what's going to keep it floating in the water. So the leaves are pretty waterproof, as you can see. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is thanks to the waxy cuticle on the leaf surface. Focusing just on emergent plants, emergent plants like cattails or papyrus are plants that are well rooted at the bottom of the water. So their roots will be in the soil at the bottom of a pond or a swamp and their stems will grow out of the water so that they are emerging from the surface. Another type of aquatic plant are the cattails, which can not very clearly be seen behind me, but I promise they're there, you gotta believe me. Cattails actually come straight out of the water. They keep themselves upright with a stem. So I'm gonna go try and get a cattail. I'm probably going to fall in and drown, but um, this is what I do for you. I have a very sad life. Let's do this. Here they are. 
This is probably a terrible idea. Oh, I probably look insane right now. I'm just standing up to my waist in water here to get a reed out of the lake. And there she is, the cat's tail. I've uh, just soaked myself. The, I think I need some new shoes. Foot's kind of coming out of there. Hey, 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 enough, enough of the feet. Enough of the feet. But I did manage to get a great reward, and that's two dead reeds. These are cat's tails. I don't know, the, those don't quite look like cat's tails to me. They look like something else. Moving on, they are a type of emergent plant. You can see how long these are, and that's so they can stand out of the water. If I crack one of them open here, you'll see on the inside, uh, it's very fibrous all these little fibers. So inside it's actually hollow. That means what's inside of here is air, and when we put air inside of something like armbands or a float, it will cause it to be more buoyant and to float in the water. They grow their shoots extra early to allow them to grow tall as quick as possible so that they can emerge above the water. Their stems are stiff and firm to keep them upright, out of the water and buoyant. And so we've come to the end of our video about aquatic plant adaptations. If you enjoyed this video, then why not check out my video on desert plant adaptations or many more on my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. I don't know why I have the sudden urge to try this, but I have seen this a lot on um, social media. If you bite a cat's tail. Yep, don't know what I expected there.